Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer. Welcome back to Vicky 3. It's episode number 7. Let's continue right on playing. Just before the end of that last episode, I made a, a move to upgrade our Navy. And it's backfired a bit. Uh, for now, it's leading us to have a pretty harsh negative balance uh, while we're trying to pay for ironclads. But with an election in a few days, we're going to have a chance to kind of reassess where our government is at. Uh, right now we have infamy that is dropping just below 26 now it'll be below 25 here soon we immediately turn around and then put that in into another attack you, you kind of have to have that dwindle down a bit finally after all this time the conservative party the one that's been holding us back for ages down to 17.9 percent the time for change is is definitely upon us with a chance to move away from peasant levies and into a professional army there there's a bit of a handoff with that one it really does limit the number of battalions and we have more than what that limit is. and its distribution model would, would be problematic so switching to a professional army in the short term would hurt us quite a bit but we also have an even better chance to pass national guard where we have no home affairs now uh, the bureaucracy cost is a bit of a problem but you add to mobilization uh, political movement for radicalism is dropped uh, conscription rate goes up it's not the greatest one to have but it's something we'll take it already passed into consideration on the first go we're at 42 uh, percent overall we have a 96 percent chance to improve increase just a three percent chance to stall that uh, means we're in very, very good shape with trying to get something done. Uh, we also have that inf infamy down to a 23 now. And it's not improved much, but Valens is improving. I mean, it's gotten about 3k better uh, than it was already. But our construction's just not that high. We, we have this early focus with that sick man of Europe where you have a large army and really, really need that army to modernize as quick as possible which drastically increases costs um, and in order to ooh, actually this is okay. okay we have something here i just thought of something now that we're finally finally in a position where the local governors it was at 17 percent just a little bit ago it's already back up to 26 and they're they're the strongest. Once again, never ending. They didn't get much of the vote, but they still have the political power. Uh, do we have to continue suppressing them for now? I mean, they're they're a freaking nightmare for us. If I could, I would stop suppressing them so that we can uh, put the 200 authority back into some taxes. Those taxes could really help us offset what's going on there. Uh, we only have two taxes right now one of them is 500 it's 35k that you get for that and actually you know it's not that much we're gonna go ahead and change the game here uh, we have untaxed grain but now we're gonna replace it we have 500 points and you know look what you can get for 500 <laughs> All right, yeah, re restructuring the consumption taxes has helped us a bit. We're about 7K better off than we were. That'll help us in the short term. Uh, but you can see it's our expenses that are just really high. Uh, we need to improve the economy. And that's been one of the difficult things is we still have a very basic traditionalism mercantilism land-based tax like there's been very little change here the tenant farmers we finally made change on but all we did was hurt the local governors nothing else uh, so with without systems in place to help us it's been challenging but we're into ascent already just two times through like that part so losing 20k and our gold reserves are now slipping under 500k I have to really, really keep an eye out and do something. For now, I'm happy letting the uh, infamy come down. Have the time. Improve our economy. Trade agreement with France. Okay. France likes us. But they still have that 
German Empire. We already have the defensive pack. They would accept the alliance. They would rather have us than, than Germany, but we, at this point, can't make that happen. Austria-Hungary have 13k power now. Our power is at 9. Not that far behind them, but it's... Just three times through, and National Guard has passed. We still have our 256, so no change there. Army's still present. It's always the nervous one when you make those kind of changes. What's what's going to happen to your army as you uh, get a total rework? Uh, furniture. We've been on lathes. Increased wood, but it's going to produce a lot more furniture. It is going to increase, supposedly, by 3k. Quinine, that's going to help us with uh, colonizing when the time comes. Uh, Egypt is still caught up in their aristocratic revolt. The economy is definitely getting closer, but we're now into having credit, and it's not gotten close enough. So I, I think it is time that we do something about that, and we're going to go ahead and turn it into a positive balance by increasing the taxation level. It's going to hurt the legitimacy. It's going to add to... Uh, the radicals, but it's going to take care of that credit and get us back into a positive balance. We looked at it previously, and Oman was the next easy state. They have zero diplomatic ties with anyone, but three small states as they're split up, all with very low infamy gain. We're down to 15, by the way. Uh, Trucial Coast is on the side that we are on, so we're going to go ahead and go for the Trucial Coast first. If something happens with Britain to where we want to get them in a war again, that could be a good trade-off that they might accept at some point and not really cost us much. Nobody's going to join in. In fact, look, this is all that's left. The other two states are only going to add seven infamy, which is still going to keep us below that 25 mark we hit uh, pretty recently. And Oman instantly backs down. They want nothing of it as we start adding other war goals in. Uh, so for now, we get the Trucial Coast, which is already incorporated Incorporated uh, as Bahrain, Qatar are part of that as well. Our number of loyalists has dropped by a bit uh, since we did turn up the taxes, but gold reserves are back to being a thing. We've gotten rid of uh, the negative balance as we continue to try to grow the economy to to be stable enough i mean we do have a decent amount of gdp and you see how it's taken a pretty steady growth but it did take a bit of a hit there and i think that hit that we're looking at was where where i turned things up on the navy uh, we're at 23 percent now and literacy standard of living is climbing and we now have a hundred authority at least for the time being and can get liquor on the go. That bumps us up to 31k. If you turn that tax down, we might be just about back to uh, to even. Looking back at our uh, situation regarding our Navy and that huge, you know, increased cost that we uh, ended up taking on, I have two military shipyards in Thrace that is set to make the ironclads the resources are fine the costs are not excessive at all uh, but we're hovering at 49 or 50 being made and that's all now the reason why we're hovering there even though we have a positive weekly balance is they've only been able to build up so much cash reserve but that's enough cash reserve to hire more people but thrace just lacks enough unemployed individuals now. It's got a growing population, so that new population is going into it, but slowly. So I'm going to go ahead and add uh, one more in Middle Egypt that has plenty, or at least I hope Middle Egypt has plenty of uh, unemployed individuals that once this is done constructing, they'll pick up the slack on what we're missing uh, when it comes to the ironclad there's just been a lot of uh, 
issues, especially in states that we conquered, of just not having enough people. The long-time goal of conquering bits, if not eventually entirety, of Persia, of course, was put on hold because of Great Qing. However, I've found a backdoor way uh, to finally invade Persia, take land off of Persia, and not involve Great Qing. Turns out that they have a defensive pact with their three neighbors to the east. Now, well, look, we can't do anything with Kalat or Afghanistan at this point. Makran it's on the coast. It is on the coast. And Makran, all they have is that defensive pact. So Kalat and Afghanistan wouldn't even be involved. Uh, Makran, they have 10 battalions. They are easy. Persia right now have 65. They can call on 33 more, but that's only 2,000 power projector, projection, where we have over 9,000 approaching 10k. We have a significant advantage. Our rural folk have decided that they are ready to have a revolution over agrarianism. Now with traditionalism, this hurts our economy significantly. So I'm actually kind of thinking thank you to the rural folk. Uh, private construction, okay, there's a bonus there, but market access, price impact, big negative. Taxation capacity, big negative. Um, okay, bureaucracy is less costly, but uh, infrastructure and trade centers are all that we can subsidize. And we have small or big hits on investment pool contributions and then subsidizing power plants like really that that's so far off into the late game um agrarianism okay private construction allocation boom big bus uh big boost subsidizing agriculture ranches plantations infrastructure trade centers all become available which means a few of our industries that just can't kickstart even though everything that they need there's no bloated market prices in the entire market not a single item has over a 30 percent markup not one item not one and it's all accessible everything that we need in the market is available in the market but here's investment pool contributions from the aristocrats the farmers all going up greatly in the capitalists is kind of staying where it's at uh, so this would be a pretty healthy boost. However, there's one thing to watch out for, and that is the approval part. Uh, the rural folk love it. Well, no, they don't even love it. They just like it. Why are they wanting to... Okay, anyway. Rural folk, industrialists, it'll make them less mad. <laughs> uh, the petite bourgeoisie like us, and they'll like us more. Trade unions, same thing. Three of them. Like, all of them only gaining plus five is not significant. And, oh, look who it is. The local governors. They're already out of power right now. Uh, they're not going to lose strength from this one, and they continue to be an issue. Uh, but they have less clout, finally. And I would think if they... If they were to start a revolution over this, that they wouldn't have... They wouldn't hold everything. That they don't have the clout. And I think beating up on them would finally, finally make a huge difference uh, on, on what we're trying to accomplish here. But you can see we're very quickly back up to 2 million in reserves. Uh, I think we can realistically... What am I doing? I think we can realistically turn this back down. And yes, we have offset. We have a positive balance. Or so we think. Uh, we've actually increased loyalists here with some events recently, but we had some really harsh negative events and some costly ones. Uh, I think we've added about 12k in uh, government-supported programs to avoid other more costly negative events just over this last year or so. Here is that market. Ironclads is literally the only one, and we are working on the military shipyard right now, focused on Ironclads in a new area because of the lack of uh, people to work. Everything else, 18% or below, 
Uh, fertilizer continues to be one of our chief issues with that ammunition, so I'll uh, boost those. Our first look at agrarianism. Even though they are not in power right now, there's enough pushback that there is a 28% chance of stalling. Uh, over 70% to advance or succeed. The odds are certainly in our favor. We'll see and hope. So far, no pushback at least. Just that stall chance is a little high for my liking. Just remember that Britain does not have an ally. We've been working a long time to turn it from a negative opinion to a positive opinion with them. But in terms of forming an alliance, that's still something they are not into. They have a minus 61 on that. The base reluctance, of course, is something you have to overcome. Uh, we are neighbors, so that's plus 10. Power projection compared to ours, it's only a minus 1. We're awfully close on that. Uh, and I think the main thing is the attitude. We've got to get back, even though we are still number seven, and that has not changed. Uh, we lost that great power status. But if we were to overcome Russia, we could definitely, uh, it's just, I mean, we're, we're behind in everything. We're neutral in everything. Overcoming them is difficult. Uh, how much have they rebounded, by the way? Back to 411 battalions, and they are now stronger than us. Uh, a little while ago, since the start of this episode, I did take a look at Egypt while they were spil still split apart to see what would happen, and the defensive pact is still there. So uh, attacking them is just going to invite you know Russia into a war. At that time, we were still slightly ahead. All right, our first window has closed. We have an advance event. Which is going to give us another 15%. Yes, I think that's the direction. We definitely want to go with that. Now we're looking at 49% chance to succeed. But bumping that stall down from just shy of 30 to just over 20. Uh, it took about 7-8% away from it. That's definitely a help. Election done. I wanted to watch out for they're at 21%, so they did not get the votes, but of course they still have. And again, it's climbing back up to 29% already. Those local governors, for whatever reason, are always, always finding a way to assert themselves, even though their numbers are tiny. There's only 102,000 local governors, but they have all the clout. On the second go, we have passed uh, introduction onto consideration for agrarianism. This has been one of the things holding us back the most, so this is a big plus if we can get this through. Uh, our first rail lines are done. Uh, we have four of them so far, and we've just turned on wooden passenger carriages. Uh, right now, production-wise, we're getting about 30, so it's time to start implementing that uh, as there's so many industries that could be stronger coal mines are one of the ones that's hurting the most so we can increase production there that's five we we have a, at least a good 30 uh, that we could still put out uh, lead is another one that has a slight negative balance we'll go ahead and turn lead on it looks like opium has high demand Two things to consider. One, okay, fine, we have a positive balance, but yeah, only just gold reserves are at 1.27 million, so I'm gonna have to be careful with how much, but now that the infamy has cleared up, we're down to 0 0.6, so it's actually not even 100% gone. There's still that small window, uh, but Macron and the likelihood of, yes, Persia joining them, oh, it's, it's so odd. Uh, now, Macron itself, that's 10 infamy that we have to account for. Holding back a little bit of what we can do in terms of weakening Persia itself. Uh, but I'm, I'm all for it. All for this move. It's our first declaration of war in quite a while. Uh, Macron only has a single state. So that makes that easy enough. There's no additional states to pull. 
and realistically what we're looking for is a good haul from Persia and there it is so Persia sides with Macron no one else is leaning their way but there's definitely still others with interest in the area including Great Qing German Empire <laughs> Uh, even Russia, Great Britain, and Spain. So we've got five great powers that we need to hold off a little bit before we go uh, taking things from Persia. However, with Persia already in the war, we can go ahead and start the process of mobilizing said armies. Halfway through, and we are down to three. Germany, Great Qing, Russia, who could still potentially intervene. Make that two. My window is gonna close here relatively soon. And I need to uh, mobilize another army here. Starting with a little bit of furthest away. Oof. Freaked me out there for a second. Our law on agrarianism has passed to ascent. It's at 50%. Uh, Great Qing's out of it. Now it's just German Empire. And we do not have a land connection with them. So here in just a couple more seconds, we will go ahead and add in those Wurgles. Beginning with Tabriz, that used to be 20 infamy for that, but as states have progressed, as our nation has grown, uh, it's not as important anymore. Luristan is the next choice. Arabistan, I think we're gonna look for that one as well. Yeah, that's only 11 additional. We're at 42 right now. We'll be below 50 before the war is even done. Now we have a positive balance, though we are not constructing anything at the moment. Uh, but we do have gold reserves. We're going to be having to call on more armies to uh, get this done. So let's go ahead and mobilize our next big one. And get that in front. And that's... Yeah, that's oh boy. Uh, it's at 82 percent okay that came out of nowhere could be tied to the war because we were at nothing spain damaging relations others are suddenly not happy now that we're at 50 plus but we've got a good healthy advantage and there's our war two opponents four states to take three from persia and the entirety of macron which will actually open us up to uh, kalat to do the same sort of thing, continue on with Persia. However, we're at 53. We're a bit notorious right now, and we're definitely not strong enough to just take everything at will. Uh, there are stronger forces in the world. Three active battles, and we are winning not all, no. Uh, but we are gaining further control. Our offense and defense are pretty much offset with each other. Uh, we just have twice as many armies as they have. So it's not going to be immediate, but we'll get ahead. Uh, 18k, 19k. Do I want to go ahead and do some construction then? Okay, we are starting to uh, make gains in territories. Uh, they're down to 25k strength. And our advantage is now growing to uh, near 70%. I was thinking about uh, bringing on another army, but for now, I think we're good. I think the best thing to do is actually do limited construction for the time being. Uh, coal is still a bit of an issue, so let's go ahead and that's a quick, easy one. Uh, we lost a general here mid-war. All right, we are now holding the first state and second state. So we've got two of the four states that we need to hold. Um, still above zero anyway, but that's going to start pushing... Uh, Persia to drop out of the war at some point, which will make Macron really easy to finish off from there. And agrarianism has passed. That ends the uh, revolution opportunity. And we still have a positive balance. Nice. Okay. Well, that means we can keep going on construction. And we now hold three of our four target states. The overall war is at zero. Macron is not dropping off right now. However, uh, Persia, being that we hold all three war goals on them, behind the scenes, they have got to be getting closer and closer to wanting to make peace. 
uh, you could see, yeah, plus 565 for them. Much, much higher. And their war support's at minus 32. Minus 39. So it's ticking down pretty quickly. Uh, we'll see Persia drop out of the war. Uh, we may need a invasion of Macranid, actually. That might be something we want to do now, behind the scenes. They only have two armies to hold it. Uh, we're not going to get Macran, especially if Persia is suddenly out of the war and the border closes. Uh, we would have to go through an invasion anyway with all of their forces, which was, I don't know, 10 units. was about all. 10 regiments is all, but it's going to be a lot easier to invade and take down two than it is to do 10. So we're going to mobilize these guys. And we are going to invade Macron with the Indian fleet. Anyway, meanwhile, we're making headway into multiple Persian states deeper. But again, you know, as we hold the front, uh, they're not going to last a whole lot longer. But if we get on with this invasion, there you go. We have Macron just like that. They're not able to hold us up. And that's going to allow the overall war score to tick down. And there's Persia. So just in time uh, before things ended there. And we already hold Macron. So this is going to be done in just a moment while all the British flu arrives. So in Persia, 206 to incorporate. That's going to take a bit, but five years. That's the big state. We'll uh, sit on just that one. Is that actually gives us a slight negative? I already took Macron. Now I don't have it anymore? Sure. Right. We already invaded Macron. They did not take it back from us. <laughs> and now there's... 12 armies there to try to hold us up and the war score is holding at minus 39 that's a little ridiculous considering we already won but the good news is they didn't have a chance to recover uh, they were still weak and now we take it once again or not. That's just one battle won. There. Defeat it again and again and again. Uh, War will be done in a moment. We're down to 46 on the infamy, so that's already cleared up. Devastation clearing up real quick. Turmoil is definitely there, but it's not massive. Uh, GDP is over 2 million. Just over 2 million for Tabriz. Uh, with a population of 2.7 million, that's a big addition for us. Uh, seeing a pretty healthy spike there that's got us approaching 50 million. Now we're also approaching, and it's not because of them. Their standard of living is 9 flat. Uh, we're almost up to 10, which is still really low, but so much of the population, the vast, vast, vast majority, more than what's normal, is stuck in that lower strata and uh, really, really holding us back a bit there. Overall, you know, the nation's doing okay with things. Uh, and, you know, this infamy has fallen away. Uh, we're up almost to 25% now on the literacy. The gains are, are getting better. They are definitely getting better. Proportional taxation. Uh, or they want per capita as a compromise. Okay, we're looking at 29%. Right now we have land-based taxation, which is low. We're getting 152 k It's better than the consumption base that we started with. It's one place where we made a gain. All right, that's a 73,000 difference. Massive. But going to per capita is going to see a significant rise to 226, another increase of 75 k uh, 47 if we go to proportional. Now, long term, I was just pointing out how poor we are and how few people can even afford to work. And the, the standard of living remains low as a, as a result. Per capita taxation is going to provide us more money up front. But 
it disproportionately taxes the poor. Where proportional taxation is going to at least find balance. Where graduated taxation is definitely the best. It puts it on the, the wealthy. Uh, the proportional taxation is going to help us out a little bit more. It's less popular right now, but who would like it? Uh, the rural folk, the intelligentsia, they'd all go from not liking us to liking us. The petite bourgeoisie will love us. Uh, trade unions are in favor. Armed forces are in favor. And it's the local governors that don't. And, you know, eventually you do enough to just destroy the local governors. It's the same problem here with the local governors. More groups like it. But um, I'm going to actually push for the proportional system, even though it's going to give us less money up front. As long term, it's going to put less of a burden on the poor. And it's gonna, going to allow us to lift the poor up more. And at 29%, it's got a decent chance of going forward now. There's 10% chance of debate. Nothing for stall. Advances roughly 60, and success is 30%. British flu. Uh, here we go. Oman and Yemen both pick it up. Uh, as as much as there's a lot of them that are like five or under, we don't want to spend when we're literally just finally getting a positive balance here. Gold reserves are up to 2.7 million, but if we're going to take on a big foe like Russia here at some point. I right, so just completed the steam engine project. Oh, hello, that changed. Wow, that changed significantly. Uh, we go to consideration and here we go. Preserve land-based taxation. 76% chance for lower and Middle Egypt. 87 for a number of other states. And I'm guessing that that would be a pretty sizable army however uh, they're only at a 71 i think we can keep that in check while getting this thing passed but the stall chance just f flew from zero to 25 and it took all of that away from uh advance i think nice army defense plus five kill rate plus five percent I don't understand how a state that has just been taken in a war just a couple months ago can have a su su succession. A secession movement should not occur in a state that's literally just been taken. Like there's a five-year truce. How can they rise up and... Yeah. British flu... Six months. Definitely going to see a population drop here. It's already dropping. It's already come down by like 500,000. We have projected growth right now, but it is coming down. Speaking of coming down, still infamous, but we're down to 41. Loyalty has definitely grown a lot from where it was. Wow, we went to Ascent already? That's awesome. We've gone through twice with about a 30% chance, and it's passed each time. Love that. But here comes a second negative event. 50% chance to uh, have a drop it. Hmm. I like the, uh, the loyalist part. I didn't get it, though. Didn't get it. 50-50 chance. Upper Middle Egypt. Lucasani have just three. Uh, we're actually still there. Let's go ahead and get these guys ready. One percent enactment chance increase. Now it's at 49. Stall's not changing though. There we go. Well, 10% increase, that's not bad. We're only at 48. Uh, they're gonna get a 5% political strength boost for. See, there's 
we should be getting negative events, but instead it's the opposite. They're just getting stronger. We have picked up a new army. Five uh, regiments. We'll have to get them put in elsewhere. We have a new sultan. And the fighting's on with just three regiments. It's going to be pretty dang easy. Fighting progress at 25%. Or flu issues. And it advances. 20% chance of increase. Monthly loyalist thing, but we need to get this thing passed because at 80, there's definitely a chance. And right now, it's just making. It's making those local governors worse. Making them more powerful. Attracting new people to them. Alright, we have taken the land. 18.9, but I'm not getting voted for. Mutual funds is unlocked, that's good. Plus minting. Look at that, 57. And we're, you know, on the verge of an extra 40 something. Uh, I've already. Oh, never mind, we just finished this. I already saw our construction jump by 20. While we have the chance, we're going to do even more with that. Ooh, huge jump. 30,000 in tax income. Which we're going to offset by spending 13k. But it's going to increase standard of living for lower and middle strata. Those, those are big. 70% chance January 19th. There's the capitulation on Baluchistan. Uh, looks like we need more government administration or turn things up. Let's go ahead and turn things up. There we go. That takes care of that. Central Archives is completed as a result. Yeah, we can make it even better. Or take identification documentation. We'll take that. As oh, Tabriz has coal. That's good. We've, we've lacked uh, much of a population base to help us with coal for a while. The British flu is all over our states now. Uh, oh, how did it... I don't understand how it stalled. Like, that was the one that had... Well, I don't know how it... <laughs> how it passed the introduction and consideration phase when it had the same chance to stall. Uh, but advance? Like, it's only advanced once? Even though that's been the most likely? All four times it's had... Had a chance to tick by. Um, five years income tax rate. That's going to hurt. We've hardly got a state left that's not being uh, affected by this flu. Uh, we do have an opportunity for another tax. Opium. 11k. Nice boost. We're down to a 36 on the infamy, so that's getting better. We're up to 108 on the construction for now, so that's getting better. A 91% chance on that revolution. But it's going to tick down because it's holding at 79, so it's going to drop by 10%. And then drop again the next time, depending on what happens with the event. But we might not get a next time if it passes. 60% chances, time 84.6% chance of a positive event. Uh, 50, okay, 50 states do not have the flu, but to get rid of it, all states have to be away from it. There you go, proportional taxation has passed. Government petition completed. Uh, it's gonna see an increase in our funding and long-term it's gonna have a benefit even though we could have made another 30K uh, short-term, but we do have some Money to spend now. Uh, we already resolved the taxes uh, across the board. We're already as high as we can get here. Everything's good on that front, so we can really afford to now want to wait, uh, put in more construction, get more transportation, and give more services. That's going to help us out. In fact, help us out. We've just jumped from uh, just as I was saying it. 
we went from 10.2 to 10.4 we're seeing that climb rather quickly we finally exceeded 25 percent on our literacy rate at 55 million we're still ranked seventh uh, we're not too far above british raj but they were above us before they and great ching both were so we have overtaken them we were in reality ninth before even though our ranking was officially seventh now it's eighth because great ching is up there they are not number one like they normally are in this game they are very much only uh, number four or number 11 depending on how you look at their ranking system uh, and russia has overtaken the u.s u.s is now that next target they were like number three or four at the start of this thing they're looking a little bit weak but in terms of population uh, we're 10 million ahead of austria hungary nearly 10 times our population uh, we're six million ahead of the german empire but we're a third of their gdp austria hungary gdp is almost identical russia is about 17 million ahead on that that's being the biggest difference but the standard of living we're pulling ahead of great ching and russia finally and uh, playing some catch up on the other european powers and with more finances we suddenly have 5.8 million in reserve and we can afford to like i said take care of that transportation the other things but we have we can also begin an expansion on our army which is now at 263 regiments 9,500 army power projection i do not believe and let's go ahead and stop it here so it's 1902 now we've still got plenty of time left uh, but we've certainly gone a ways into this and we're finally starting to take off and get more powerful still some infamy to eliminate getting to breeze has been a uh, i would say let's take on egypt but we know russia is going to stand by them and russia is still tough right they're 4k ahead of us alone so we would need a partner we would need an ally and we have no partner no ally france was the one who would be willing and oh, they'd be great but they're at minus 29 these days Austria, Hungary, they really don't like us. German Empire, don't like us. Great Britain, things have gotten worse for all of them. Spain definitely don't like us. We know they don't. Uh, part of our issues at the moment is we have high infamy. It's not helping us out. Uh, great Ching, <laughs> right? No, of course not. So fighting an ally at these times is rather difficult. Um, so having to go solo, having to do things alone. Brazilian Peasant Revolt. Looks like an opportunity. Argentina. They've taken a lot more of the state here. Um, I think we have the strength to get after them now, but we have too much infamy. We let them go for a little bit because our finances were so bad and I didn't want to do things there for a while. And then we focused on Persia instead. Uh, but attacking Kalat. Ooh, that's a return state. <laughs> uh, Persia would step in. So would Afghanistan, though. So we're looking, you know, a little more strength coming out of them, but nothing we can't handle. But what we can't handle, though, is too much infamy. So gotta wait. But Kalat is absolutely a path into Persia without drawing in Great Chain. I think we're now in for some rapid rise. We've got the local governors. I mean, they still have 22%. But bit by bit by bit, their clout decreases. Bit by bit, they're forced to just suck it up. They absolutely hate us. But look, finally, we're getting bonuses. The armed forces like us. Plus 20% military research speed. Plus 10% production research speed. Plus 10% agriculture ranches and plantations throughput and plus 10 percent society research speed very helpful bonuses and we're we're bearing the fruits of a hard-fought long drawn-out campaign to unseat those local governors and decrease their influence recently they very much don't like us and they want to start a revolution but they don't have the support anymore. So they're they're finally weak enough that we're able to make more rapid gains. Or we're starting to catch up. We, we could bypass that sick man of Europe, but the local governors, I think, was even more problematic for us uh, than sick man of Europe was. 
uh, but with those two obstacles now dealt with, uh, we're starting to take off. We're really starting to take off and play catch up. And we did manage to expand a fair bit all the while. I mean, we're, we're certainly not the largest. Um, land area, hard to say, but population's at seven. You know, that GDP, like we're, we're top 10 in a lot of areas and literacy is still bad, but it was like 190, 180, it's up to 125. 10.3 standard of living, that's now number 80. So that, that was way down here as well. So uh, we, we've definitely made some gains and the loyalist is way higher. I mean, we were looking at 100,000, 200,000. Now it's 1.7 million. And we have a nice, healthy, you know, almost 50K balance. I'm happy with the progress we made here. Uh, addition to Breeze has been fantastic as well. That's going to do it for this episode. I'm a Cathlon Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Bye for now.